Good evening, I'm Kyle Clark. And I'm Jennifer Meckles. For the first time, we're seeing the frantic police response after the shooting of two deans at East High School last year. Our Nine News Investigates team has spent the day looking into the shooting and all what led up to it. Chris Vanderveen looks at what we know about what happened prior to this day inside one of Denver's flagship high schools. The story starts at Overland High School 2021. A student by the name of Austin Lyle was in trouble. This arrest warrant obtained by Nine News Investigates says his mom had found a weapon under Austin's dresser. Police called it an AR-15 style rifle. It did not have a serial number as it was a ghost gun assembled with gun parts purchased separately. Cherry Creek schools expelled Lyle. A little more than a year later, Lyle attempted to enroll at Denver's East High School and staff there reached out to Overland. They right away told us that he had been expelled. And the reason for the expulsion. That is Sean Anderson, East's assistant principal. Denver police obscured his face before giving us this video. So downtown, when I met the director said it was like he's good to come to the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this interview with Denver police, Anderson outlined the Denver Public Schools position. Gun charge or no gun charge. Lyle had to attend East. Since he lived in our attendance area, he was ours to take. Anderson says for weeks the daily checks of Lyle were minimal. And that check-in is just that was just how you feeling today. Okay. Yeah. So like verbal stuff. Yep. That changed in early March. So on March the second. Okay, that's one. Okay. Um, we had a student that reported to his mother that he thought Austin had pulled a gun out of his bag and put it into his pocket. And so they confronted Lyle inside the school, and it didn't go well. So he turned around, walked, opened the door, and walked out. Okay. Um, and Javel and I followed him. He walked briskly down the south hallway, out the back door in Detroit. That night, Denver police asked to search Austin Lyle's father's apartment. It, too, did not go well. You can say no. I just need a yes or no. You know, I will say no. Sweet. Unable to find any gun, Anderson said he then decided to personally search Lyle every day from then on, something he admitted the district had not recently trained him to do. Does DPS at any point in time or CSO coming in and train anybody on how to do that? I am maybe when I first started with DPS as a dean. Two weeks later, Anderson was at a school assembly when Lyle arrived. No one could reach him. Police say that day Lyle brought this gun with him. Another administrator noticed its outline as he asked Lyle to empty his pockets inside room 129. In this room, police say Lyle shot that administrator, a dean, and another dean before running away. We could try to print this out. This is the suspect right here. Austin Lyle. Later that day, Austin Lyle drove his father's car to the mountains. He wrote a note to his family before he killed himself. We've elected to blur it. Lyle was 17 years old. The district told us Friday in this statement, it followed all applicable laws governing discipline, safety, and enrollment. Chris Vanderveen, 9 News. A few days after the shooting at East, the principal of McAuliffe Middle School told us he was deeply concerned about having to check a student for weapons with zero guidance from the district on how to do it. The district ended up firing him months later. The district insisted it was not because of his whistleblowing. That now former principal disagrees, and he's filed a federal lawsuit. If you have a tip for 9 News Investigates, you can email us at 9 News Investigates at 9news.com. Aurora police are investigating tonight after a teenager was seriously hurt in a shooting this afternoon. Police say it happened just before 2 o'clock in a field off East Jewel. This is east of E-470. A 17-year-old boy was shot. Police say his injuries are life-threatening. Police have not arrested anybody, and they didn't share any information about a suspect. We started the day off pretty nice and warm today until the clouds rolled in this afternoon, bringing along with them some chilly weather tonight. So what are we thinking for this weekend, Lauren Robinson? I think the weekend is going to be pretty nice, but we did see some gusty winds this afternoon all across the Front Range and Eastern Plains, and we're still monitoring some strong storms that were in the Eastern Plains and are now starting to move their way through portions of Nebraska and Kansas. Along with it, several severe thunderstorm warnings, even a few tornado warnings have popped up, but the strongest storms have moved their way eastward and out of Colorado. We are going to continue to monitor a few of these storms as they move their way eastward. We also have a few uh, severe weather watches in effect to across southern 
northern portions of the plains. And then off to the west, we did see some light snow showers up in central and northern portions of the high country. Those are going to continue to wind down as well. But let's talk about those winds. They were blowing around today. Down in Lamar, we saw 82 mile per hour wind gusts. Hugo and up in Basalt, we saw 62 mile per hour wind gusts, 61 mile per hour gusts in Boyero and in Bethune. Kit Carson and Ray both saw 55 mile per hour gusts and then 56 mile per hour gusts were reported in Yuma. So as we continue through my seven day forecast, we're going to talk about those strong storms continuing their path eastward. We're also going to talk about warm weather for the weekend and some strong winds ahead. All of that just ahead. Denver Police Chief Ron Thomas says his department has refused a request to sweep a pro-Palestinian protest on the Arari campus in downtown Denver for a second time. He's now telling campus leaders he doesn't think another sweep would be legal. Chief Thomas spoke before Denver Citizen Oversight Board today about last week's sweep of the encampment on the Tivoli Quad. Denver police participated in that sweep in which at least 40 people were arrested for trespassing. Chief Thomas told the board he thought the campus workers would be going in to remove the protesters' tents, but they didn't. So protesters just returned and set up camp right after the first wave of arrests. The chief says he then refused a request for DPD officers to return and sweep again because the protest was growing. And he said he didn't think it would be, quote unquote, safe or appropriate. We absolutely aren't going to just, um, you know, go in and sweep out this peaceful protest just because they're occupying um, uh, a space on your campus that you'd like to use for something else right now. Thomas also said he doesn't see a legal way to make mass arrests unless the protest escalates to the point that it could be considered an unlawful assembly. And he said DPD doesn't have any evidence to suggest that's going to happen soon. The Cherry Creek School District says an elementary school is now getting a new principal after an attempted kidnapping during recess a couple weeks ago. The district released some edited security footage this week showing what happened at Black Hill Elementary. You see the man in that circle on the screen walked onto a field where a group of kids are playing and the kids start running away. Police say that man who is a registered sex offender tried to grab one of the kids but then tripped over a blanket he was holding. The man appears to get up and walk away. Police arrested him at a nearby Walgreens. Well, parents were outraged how the school handled this incident. They never secured the perimeter. They let kids walk home that day and they say the communication was not clear. And I think the communication is 100% the, the biggest trigger for most people because we're, we're going into it blind. We, we are trusting you are telling us the truth. And when we find out from the community and news sources that you aren't, it's professional incompetence. So the principal at the time this happened, Amanda Rip Logal, admitted to parents that she made mistakes. The district announced today it has appointed Chuck Puga as the acting principal for the rest of the year. He used to be principal at Smoky Hill High School. A man's in custody tonight accused of starting several fires at businesses in Fort Collins. As 9 News reporter Rhea Josh shows us who helped police catch this suspect and the business owner who is very grateful for some quick thinking. It's hard enough sleeping in a bed that's not yours. So I'm here visiting my sister. 21-year-old Jack Turbinson was woken up in the middle of the night by a strange sound. Starting to hear some like scrapes and almost like people were like hitting like metal on metal. He was staying with his dad in an Airbnb above Rainbow Restaurant, just north of CSU's campus. This is where I was sleeping, and to paint a little picture, he was here prying on this window frame with a, a screwdriver, and I whipped open the blinds and made complete direct eye contact with the guy. With Staring the face with to face with a man now accused of arson. Jack's first thought. Angry because he woke me up. His second thought, get this guy on camera. Grab my phone off the nightstand and I brought my phone out like this in front of him. And then he proceeded to walk over here. And this is where he was starting to, uh, trying to start the fire. You can see some remnants of the ash. Jack's video helped the police identify and arrest the suspect. Police found him trying to start another fire. I don't think I've ever stopped an arsonist before. They were trying to burn the place down last night. Linda Washika, the owner of Rainbow Restaurant, is glad she can make light of the situation. This is my home. I've had it, I started working in 1973 and bought it in 76. Knowing this story could have ended differently. I feel like they changed all our lives. You know, today could have been a lot different. As a thank you, she treated Jack and his dad to a meal on the house. I told those guys they could eat here whenever they're in town. <laughs> this morning I got the green chili burrito and it was about the size of my head and I 
gave it my best effort. Jack says he'll probably sleep well tonight. Yeah, I think my days as a crime fighter are numbered, but I'm glad I was able to help out. When Jack and his dad called police, they were already in the area for two other fires the suspect is accused of starting. The first at Covenant Tattoo on South College in Myrtle, the second at Backdoor Grill at Laurel in College. Rainbow Restaurant was the third business he's accused of setting on fire. The suspect is now facing charges for arson, burglary, and resisting arrest. Ria Chahat, 9 News.